Beckman Unleashed, podcast number 34. We are live. 34 is Bo Jackson's number, I believe. Herschel Walker Herschel and Walker. Walter Payton. Really? Yeah. I'm going to try to do that every single week. Although I'm already thinking about next week, 35. No idea. A I fullback. It'll be a fullback. But I, I bet I could do it for half the rest of the podcast up to 99. I could, I could, on top of my head, have a football player's number. Except for a 35, so. <laughs> Except for, well, they're, they're half the time. We'll give you a whole week to think about it, okay? Okay. All right. Here's what we're going to do, Eric. We are going to talk about the video that is primed right here. It's an Instagram video. It's my biggest video. It's the Malinois, which you YouTubers, YouTube people saw. I did a long form of. I put a short video on there on Instagram, and it got a bunch of views. Zach George commented on it. We're going to go through his comment, my reaction, and some of the other comments. And it's interesting because um, Zach um, commented. And uh, Do you think... So did you have a, a comment on your Instagram post, or did you just put it out there with no... No, I said something. We, we could go to the top and find it. I said like... I can oh, what did I too. say? Uh, bring it up while I'm talking. Okay. Yeah. So if you, this was my last, uh, by the time you see this podcast, it'll be the second to last video. My next video coming out is a Kane Corso video that should come out on Wednesday. Um, so a day before this podcast, I have one for you. So, okay. You said dominant aggression can be quelled by an owner or another dog who shows said dog that he's not the biggest and strongest that others can and will be stronger, tougher, and more persistent. Full video now on YouTube. Okay. That's what I said. And we can bring up the video so they see it. Although people watching this podcast have most likely seen this video. It's doing well. It's it's doing well for how, how short it's been out. So if you um, want to bring it up. Can I, I'm going to share the comments here. Or do you already show this? No. Okay. Here. Let's go ahead and share the screen so they don't think we're making so this. So we're up. basically going to go through and just go through comments and talk about this video and what people thought about yeah you want me to read this i don't want to talk over it oh we're going to go right into zach george's comment why because it's interesting not because yeah we so dislike zach george or we love zach george or he even not that he even gets that much play like if fair. we read it like people don't care or maybe they care a little but it's not a big deal it's just interesting so I'm going to try to read this, but I'm Zach little, George's comment. I've Go got ahead. a little distance from it. So it says, Zach George, certified Instagram, blue check mark. It's concerning to see the persistence of outdated views, particularly the overemphasis on dominance to explain a broad range of natural canine behaviors. All right, I'll read it before we get into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, read the whole thing. While I acknowledge that certain behaviors such as mounting may be interpreted within a context of dog-to-dog -dog dominance, it's crucial to differentiate this from a human-dog dynamic. Recognizing dominance in dogs can lead to misconceptions over resulting or often resulting in unnecessary harsh training methods based on misguided belief that humans must assert dominance over their dogs. Do you want to keep reading this? Yeah, I'll do it. The concept of dominance is a slippery slope. When overemphasized, it risks oversimplifying the complex social dynamics between humans and dogs. It's essential to delve deeper, asking critical questions like what are the underlying causes of this behavior? What emotional states are the are the dogs experiencing? How how do classical conditioning and the environment impact their behavior? These inquiries help us understand full context, leading to more compassionate and effective dog training methods. As seen in your video, so he's talking to me, as seen in your video, intervening in situations like scuffles or overly, oh my God, this is- Sorry, I'm moving it on. Or overly enthusiastic play is sometimes necessary and can be done gently and responsibly. However, the outdated notion of needing to establish dominance as a one-size-fits-all solution to overly simplistic, is overly simplistic and ignores the nuances of dog psychology and behavior. In our efforts to provide the best care and training for dogs, it's important to move beyond archaic concepts of dominance, embracing modern evidence-based approaches that consider the emotional and psychological well-being of dog dogs leader lead, do, leads of, to healthier leads to healthier, more respectful human dog relationships. Let's focus on understanding and addressing the real needs of our dogs rather than clinging to the outdated ideas that dominance is the key to effective training. And then I responded back. I think we, I'm going to get into this right here. Though, yeah. Right I now. think we should, 
you, we should address what's written here. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then we'll on. follow down and see if there's anything else that might be interesting because I know he commented yeah, twice. Yeah, it's hard to I just do keep think going. I should probably get prescription eyeglasses because you can, it's or starting you, to look like a huge blur. I'm I sure. I need I need eyeglasses. Bad. It probably Maybe would help it would probably update me. your image too. You know, yeah. you're looking a little outdated mm -hmm. <laughs> with your outdated approach to everything. I'm outdated in all areas. Yeah. All right. I even commented later and said what I'm going to kind of say here. I don't mind most of what he said and I, it's fine. I, I, I agree. I do. Yeah, you can. You are a, oh, can I do this with can your you move thing? my diet Pepsi? No, <laughs> no, please don't do that. You're disgusting. Diet you're, Pepsi. Outdated, your outdated approach. To okay. Dominate. I didn't mind most of it. I didn't mind any much of it. And I even said that. I don't, I said, I don't mind your first comment. Your second comment, I did screw with more, but it's just wasn't bad. He, 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 the concept of dominance is a slippery slope. He's right about that. When overemphasized, it risks oversimplifying complex social dynamics between human dogs. It absolutely is that the problem seems to well, be, and where there's a little bit of the, my problem, I say dominance in this clip and in this video, because this is the case with this dog. If I had a nice lab on here, who I was teaching loose leash walking to, I would never use the term dominance. So he's like, you can't say dominance or whatever. You should be yeah. careful saying dominance. I'm like, it's in regards to this video. Well, there's an important there's a, thing to remember too. There's a video playing. Some when people, I'm this. and I'm not talking about Zach George. Some people do talking head videos. And then like you do some sometimes, and then yeah. there's a talking head video. There's a kind of live action training session. And so what you would say in a talking head video where you maybe talk for 10 minutes and prepare what you want to say is going to be a lot different than what you're saying to a client real time with a dog when you yeah. just did it or, on the fly. This is not practice. A lot of it's live audio. Or yeah, or my voiceovers. Yeah. Which as you know, and you've tried to get me out of is essentially live audio too. Could be a bit more. <laughs> I do not through. script these voiceovers because I, I don't want to. Yeah, not, I don't say, say I don't not script it and then say stuff wrong. I say it right in my live audio. I say it true. I just don't script it. Yeah, you're trying to get the most accurate visceral yeah, reaction. You're trying to say. So let's just dive in real quick. So it's concerning to see the persistence of outdated views. So we'll say maybe he's not talking about your views. I think he might be though. It's like a little walk the line. Like later he says you, so he's addressing me, but it's kind of it's, Particularly it's hard to the overemphasis you know, on dominance to explain a broad range of but I agree natural with that. canine behavior. I so agree with that. Here's my issue with um so dominance to explain a broad range of canine natural canine behaviors. Well, yeah. um, so what's funny about that is generally speaking, um a lot of the, I don't know what you would call it, um, different ends of the political spectrums would also often say that like dominance and, you know, patriarchy is kind of on one end of the spectrum. And it's like, so um, a lot of like very liberal oh, folks actually say that like everything is related to hierarchy, uh, patriarchy and dominance and oh. men. So it's like, but he's not saying, but he's saying, He's well, I guess he's saying don't, don't use do dominance. That. Maybe you're oversimplifying oh. it. Which so maybe that actually is consistent yeah. in some ways. But what's funny about I, never of I was listening to this video and I'm, I'm not getting sidetracked here, but there's this uh, video on YouTube I was watching. Hey, make so, us big. Wait a minute. Okay. Don't you think? Uh yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And then we'll go back. We'll go back to it. And we can okay. read it too. They don't need go to ahead. read it. Keep They're going. probably driving in their car. But like uh it was about this guy who went to prison and when he was in prison, Wes know, Watson. No, this was another you guy. He was interviewed by that guy, Ian Bick. You know, oh, yeah, that, that little dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah that and little prison guy. Everyone teases him and calls yeah, him. He's you got know. a good podcast. He doesn't look like he would be in prison, but, yeah. he, but he was. And so he was interviewing this guy. I think his name was like 1090. That's 10, his name? 90, no, he was like 1090 something. Bro, he'll come and it's get cool you, name. bro. Oh, okay. It's some, some gang-related thing. Name. So anyways, whatever. Gang-affiliated. The thing was, is that he was talking about going to this state prison in Florida and he was saying how, which you probably went to a couple of state prisons in Florida. I as lived well, there. Was saying that like, he's like basically all the stuff that they talk Florida's about. Florida's a internet, state I don't want to go to prison in. No. Florida's It sounded wild. Rough. It sounded rough. And the yeah. prisons sounded yeah. crazy. And he was saying that all the BS that people talk about, you know, in the world, in the outer world, right? He's like, oh. nobody cares about that in there. He's like in, the, in, in jail. Bro. All people understand is violence. Are right? you, you, you have you a see point. what I'm saying, Do right? You have a point to this. You see what I'm saying? No. 
is the dominance and the violence, oh, right? right? Is right, there like right, in right, jail? Right. There is no, there is no BS talk. There's only, it's all this. There's only, there's only what you're there's doing. There's only a hierarchy. There's only a dog hierarchy, basically. Yeah. Is because, that, and that's to some extent, not to oversimplify well, what you do. That's interesting. Is that you, um, you are basically saying, I will not be dominated by this dog. I will, I'm calling the shots here. I don't care why the dog wants to do X, Y, Z. Right. Well, yes. But as we've said before, I do care if the dog's scared, if the dog's, overstimulated and I threw him in the mix. This is after playing by himself and mm. seeing dogs. I mean, I do care. Yeah. It's, it's very thought out. Yes. But once it's there and once I'm saying, Hey, this dog's been nice to you. And you're like, no, I'm going to get on that dog and have these eyes that I showed in this. It becomes prison. Yeah. And so the prison analogy, obviously for those that are hard headed or don't understand is like, that is a real, I mean, humans, as you said in the last podcast, humans are animals, right? And there is a legitimate place where there is a time and a place where men are, where violence rules among men. Yes. And that there is no talking your way out of it. There is only no, no, no aggression Eric, and violence. Here's what you're not understanding prison doesn't exist. It doesn't? <laughs> no. And what you're saying about in the prisons does not exist. What is it? Oh, because dominance doesn't exist. I right? mean, the whole thing. But we're just going to if if you're saying that prison, that there is this thing within prison and within society and with the circles of groups in society and whatnot, where 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 sort of there's there's strong people and weak people and and behavior has to be checked so things don't get dangerous and yeah. stuff, then you're kind of bringing up topics that um, that are uncomfortable. They're uncomfortable. Okay. And and people who who want to think that that there is no such thing as aggression and dominance. This is counter to what they are so saying. He, so he says... Um, Sorry, did that... No, no, no. This is, I'm, I'm trying to frame it a little bit. Just I know. I didn't as we get in. No, no, right? no, you're good. You're good. So um, I just want to throw that, you know. No, it's people good. Get, people it's get stabbed good in the face. Um, so it's crucial to differentiate this from the human-dog dynamic. Recognizing dominance in dogs can lead to misconceptions all often resulting in unnecessary. unnecessary harsh training methods. I agree. I mean, the question it really becomes: What does he mean by harsh training method? Does he mean oh, no, no. your? Are your training methods harsh, or is he just saying that know. in general? And there's a lot of mis. Belief? So, so I think if I'm not right, I, I, if I'm right, Caesar Milan talk, talked about dogs walking in front of you and it being dominance. Never once in my life have I said that or thought that. There's a lot of misconceptions about dominance. My method of letting the door out the front door, letting the dog out the front door, and then turning around has nothing to do with dominance, has everything to do with operant conditioning and, and, and tamping them down before the stimulus, before the very difficult two blocks down the road when he sees yeah, Charlie. It, the, but the, this dominance is, it, it really has gotten like, <laughs> like the dominance is everything. I say dominance in a tenth of my videos. When it applies, because yeah. it applies to this yeah. dog and many other dogs and to act like it does not exist, which which to his credit, listen, I I agreed with most of this post. I know. I well, know and didn't. to be fair, so I wanted to address this on the podcast today. You were not ready to talk about this before. I forgot about it. You forgot about it. For four days after I gave my response, I literally forgot about it. Two hours later, a Lannister never forgets. So that's why you're I a Lannister. I actually, don't want to be a Lannister. No, dude. I want to be um, the like Jon Snow guy. What was what was his family? He was he was. I don't know. He was, was the like dragon people. Or yeah, okay. he was a Targaryen. Okay, here we go. So, but I want to get <laughs> and, to this and a Northern. Uh, so, uh, often resulting in unnecessary harsh training methods based on the misguided belief right. that humans must assert dominance over their dogs. No, so, there's I mean, a time and a place to assert dominance over your dogs. No, but I mean, so but, that is, but let's break that fact. part down, right? Based on the misguided belief. Yeah, yeah. So the belief that is misguided is that humans must assert dominance they, over their dogs. Right, right. He's wrong. So, but there, there can are, only be there are some dogs out there where you. And by the way, what does dominance mean? Like it's just a it's a word to describe behaviors. There are dogs like the, there are dogs that try to dominate the people in their house. They exist. I'm thinking about my my youngest and and or my in my middle. Like, what do you do to a one year old when he tries to rip out the hair of the three year old? Like, it's not like you are you don't dominate 
uh, but you still are like, hey, you can't, hey, dude. you can't rip your sister's hair out, bro. I know you're only one, yeah. but you still can't do it. Yeah, your sister doesn't like getting her hair ripped out. Yeah, it's so it's, we have to intervene. We intervene. So that's all right. Does he have a problem with the intervention? How the intervention is done? No, 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 no. Or it's just the word. No, no, oh. Miss guy. He's saying the, the harsh training method based on the misguided belief and, that humans must assert dominance over their dogs. So the mis that misguided belief is that humans must assert dominance over their dogs. Now, there's only three ways to do this, right? You would assert dominance over your dogs. You would be on an equal playing field where there is no dominance or uh, submission. Yeah. Or you would practice submission to your dog, right? There's only three ways that it could be on oh, if you were to draw, to your dog. draw a scale, right? Oh. That was the only option. You'd be like crazy dominant, like or, par partially, no. you know, or sporadically dominant, and then totally right, it's like submissive. A line, right? Yeah, just like your last one my, when you my did continuum. your continuum. Your continuum, right? All right. So, so you see what you I'm gotta saying? Got to be somewhere on there. And, and then to be perfect would be almost impossible, right? To be just on that, with sometimes they're dominant, sometimes you're dominant, right? It's oh. not likely going to happen, right? The dog's going to take the dominant bone them. and run away, run some with of, it. Some right? of them, yeah. yeah. When well, you've seen Caesar. Well, you've seen Caesar a lot of the way, and I'm sure you have this too, but like a lot of the people that took their dogs and they were more like lap dogs. Yeah. And then he's like, this dog has no problem. It's just you. Yeah. It's it just, it, but Caesar, I saw a video and Yo, I know you, you're back in Caesar. I I'm not back in Caesar. And I, that's oh, going to, that's going to, that's going to ruffle your feathers. If you ever try to give it on here, I, I love get Caesar. that. I love Caesar. He kind of got off everything was dominance and it kind of messed things up. He had this chow and he brings this, this chow was from the streets and the chow's like in this big sea of hardwood flooring in this guy's house. And so he was like the, the, the chow would like kind of freak out and do these things. And so he's like, Oh, he's trying to be dominant over you. And I looked at the chow standing there. I'm like, that chow's terrified of the hardwood, which is a very real thing dogs. Mm. And it's a sea of hardwood. And I'm like, bro, he's, he's like weirdly scared. He doesn't know how to walk. It's like all the, he's like lashing out. Cause all these things I was like, this ain't dominance. And so there is this very, you have to be careful with using the word. Like, here's what I do with these videos. I assume when people hear dominance, they're also watching the video of the dog's yeah, yeah, behavior yeah. as I'm doing it. No, they don't. And they they're, the comments. they're like, dominance doesn't exist. I'm like, did you happen to see the dog in the video that I'm saying dominance on? Think of how crazy like the that silliest is. Thing. How it's like, it's like, hey, let's take a couple of uh you know comments out of context, right? Part from a Instagram video that's also out of con content, right? Uh, context yeah. to the YouTube video, which was well done, but still not the entire picture because they we can't show them an hour or you can, but no one would watch it, right? So yeah. it's all part of this like yeah, flyby you, comments that you are really happening. have to have trust in the person giving you the video, right? Like you kind of have to go, I don't think Joel would choose this 37, 38 second clip and sort of m just be wrong about it. Like I have to trust some things are true that I wasn't able to see, I guess. Yeah, but you don't trust anyone wearing New Balance shoes. Bro, New Balance shoes <laughs> are pretty cool. Oh, you're, are you wearing the same ones? I always wear them. Okay. They're my only shoes. <laughs> um, okay, here's what I don't want to do, right? I don't want to do with this comment what people do with me when they make reaction videos to my thing and they stop it and they go, oh, and then he said this and then they break it down. Like, I don't. What's I don't, the difference though? That's obnoxious when they do it to me. But so one I is, don't want to do is it a, to his. A live video. And one is on my page. <laughs> one is a live video, right? Yeah, and the yeah. other one is a thoughtful. I know. One page response. So, I mean, we're giving airtime to the response. I okay. mean, right. this is the message. I, but the whole, the whole. But I'm I go, with you. We could go a little faster. I go How by a lot of the like, what was the feeling on it? And it like he, he he's not it's wrong. Not, it's not vicious in a right? lot of them. It's not vicious. He's not wrong about a lot of his points. It's a bit unclear sometimes whether Which he's is fine. whether he's talking about you or he's saying these bad things are you or if it's just yeah. That's where I'm Which a bit. That's where I'd like him. It's to a second comment know. that I that I have more of a problem with. But let's just run through fast. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. So let's know. see. The concept of dominance is a slippery slope. When overemphasized, right, right, it risks oversimplifying the complex uh, social dynamics between humans and dogs so this is where i disagree oh. it's essential to delve deeper asking critical questions like what are the underlying causes of these behaviors okay you want me to just answer these live yeah not specifically <laughs> like, because like i feel like i can them, answer, answer for them. you but you should answer no them. i was there for the session 
what are the underlying causes of this behavior? Uh, he's born with he's born with it. Okay, he was, he was not abused. He was. So it's he, he's a Malinois. Genetics. Okay. There's dogs who are genetically um, underlying cause. Genetics. Yeah. Well, yeah. He was bred. Check. He was bred into it, right? I mean, they bred for these. Take it off the list. Yeah. All but right. Then, what's the next question? My only thing for the underlying causes of these behaviors is like there are behaviors that are unacceptable. That I think you've been on record saying it doesn't matter what the underlying cause of the biting necessarily is. That we're like we're not okay with the biting and we're going to stop the biting now sure if there's some environmental stimulus or, we need to address that or even previous stuff the guy had to defend himself right the best defense is good offense mm -hmm. like there are reasons that a dog will bite that is essentially not their fault that means but we do have to intervene and stop the biting then what is the quote-unquote operant punishment or correction after the biting well that varies maybe it, there is not one because the dog literally said, you're putting me in this position. It's too much. That dog looked at me horrible. I thought I was going to be attacked. Like there are reasons to bite mm -hmm. that are legitimate reasons. You just can't, as a trainer, you can't put them. If the dog isn't, can't handle it, you don't put them there. And that's a knock on my videos from people who don't work with uh, dogs like I work with is everything is the dog is put in the situation to bite, but it's not. That's the thing. They don't work with these dogs. So basically, it's very easy for them to sit on the sidelines and go, oh, you put him in a position to try to bite. No. Well, I know his history. He ran around the pasture for 20 minutes. The owner told me a bunch of information. He's biting because he feels like biting and being a jerk. We should correct that behavior. We can't yeah. just avoid life forever. No, that's that's true. And but also... um, it's saying, I mean, he's asking, so we're not saying that he's not saying this. What emotional states are the dogs oh, experiencing? Yeah. Well, I think you are clearly informed on what those states were. I am. I can answer this. What is it? What are the emotional states the dog's experiencing in this clip right here or yeah. the video? He's experiencing a prison-like <laughs> atmosphere of saying there is another big dog that has testicles and I am the biggest, baddest dog in this little area here. And he needs to know that. What are the Prince needs to know that. What are what emotional states are the dogs experiencing? He's experienced a, a level. The emotional state is a mental is state. One. Yeah, then we're going to get to that. Is a mental state of domination that he has when meeting other males. The other emotional state is a state of excitement. And there is a spiraling aspect to this dog where he got better, but he would, he would spire, he would, he would, he'd get better. Then he'd slowly build. Then he would, then I would let it go. I would let it go to a degree because he has to get with dogs. He, we have yeah. to let it happen it be and then subside. And then when it, when it, so we can make friends. Then when he goes too far with his friends, his friends or me, who's his friend, let him know that you actually can't go there. You kind of got to go here. You can be here, buddy, but not here over this dog and doing those things. Then, so that's his emotional state. So did I answer that question or yeah. did I not answer? Well, there is something I'll about answer all the questions. The one before that, I think there's like, don't a, ask the question if you don't want the answer to the question. So here's the, here's the thing with like survivor bias, right? Where I think a I lot of people, what is that? Well, have you heard about like, I've heard about survivor guilt. You've heard about, about, the the airplane, the survivor you've guilt. Heard about this, right? Survivor guilt. So there was a, this is, I'm going to bastardize I don't this like I normally do, guilt. but basically imagine the survivor bias or whatever, survivorship bias, whatever it is, where basically they came back, they had these um, airplanes from World War II, and they looked and saw where all of the airplanes, when they came back from war, were shot. And they did an analysis to see where all the planes got hit, yeah. and then they did a patch up, and, and then they reinforced future airplanes with this. And the idea I've behind that... The, the, the survivorship bias or survivor bias, whatever it's called, is based on this idea that you're only examining the planes that made it back. You don't oh, right. examine the ones that got shot down. You don't know where the ones that got shot down were hit. That's interesting. Which is I've more important. That. So this is this obviously applies to other things besides. How does it apply to this? So the way it applies to this is that folks like uh, Zach George, who knows, Dog Daddy, Many. What, anybody, right? When you're seeing their video, you're seeing the video that survived. And the video that survives here is the Malinois video. It's the Connie Corse video. So they're seeing- oh, they got put up. They're only, well, they're all getting put up, but the people that are 
the ones that are getting a million views are the ones of the Malinois, are the ones of the Cane, uh, are the ones of the Dogo, Argentina. Okay. So these are all these. So like they think that this is just normal content when it's really you've trained, you know, 25 dogs before a dog like this will show up. Right. Oh, give or take. So we're still putting out those other videos that just they might get 30, 50,000 views or we're not one will get it or the, yeah, a lot of them, they don't I even do make tons it. of sessions where I don't put it. Up. Yeah. You know, yeah, probably what one in 10 or no, no, probably five in 10 don't make it right. Yeah. No, no, no. It's probably one in five video sessions. That I do get posted, get posted. Okay. So most of them, they're not even seeing the ones that don't. So you see oh, what I'm saying with survivor yeah. bias where yeah, it's yeah. like they're seeing the very rare dog. Yeah. The one out of 50, one out of a hundred dog. Yeah. And then people are interested because they've seen a dog that's crazy like this and they see someone take control and okay. fix it. Yeah. Right. So that's yeah. why it's exciting. And so, okay. but, oh. but he might think you sit there your whole day just correcting dogs, correcting dogs that are like, you know, chihuahuas that are just minding Dude, their Dude, I had a Connie Courser out there today and I'm going to probably post it. And I'm like, you're the sweetest boy in the world. He's like lashing out at dogs. I'm like, it's okay, buddy. Like literally, because he was yeah. just this this like scared like he's doing his best like thing and then we was behind a fence and like but nice dog would come up to him he's like get out of here and i'm like it's okay dude like I've nicest got, thing ever i've got more questions for you that i don't think you can answer wait how about how do classical conditioning oh. and the environmental impact their behavior how does classical and conditioning okay so how does classical conditioning in the environment impact i assume this dog's behavior right that's he's he's commenting on a post so classic conditioning would be the associations of of um um un um automatic behaviors so happiness sadness so if he had been around a lot of mean dogs that attacked him he would be wise to attack them first i i assume it's called bomb first yeah well uh, the best defense is good often what's so the emotional thing so how does he feel about dogs he likes dogs until he meets ones with balls. Hmm. Then he doesn't like them. That is, you know, is it because they're, is it also because of the competing for resources at a more fundamental level? No, there's no resources. There's no females and there's no food and there's, he doesn't care about human attention. But then what's the beef with the other dog with Prince? Any, any intact male? Oh, that's a good question. What's the beef why would I get in a yelling match with some dude at the beach and I wouldn't with a with a female at the beach? There's just some machismo thing no, but that I mean, happens. But I mean, if let's take it. To, we're both dudes. You know, we like, to do talk, we like to talk about two things in this podcast. We like to talk about dogs. We like to talk about prison. <laughs> so let's get back to the prison, right? Which is, right, there's no, generally speaking, there's no mating opportunities exactly in oh, prison yeah. true right and yet the dominance piece and the, is hyper it's even more yeah have i ever told you this theory that i heard um and i did i tell you this Wait. on the podcast all right then i'll get to environmental impact i'm gonna answer every Wait. question okay. i hope he comments on every one of my videos so i can answer his questions on the podcast yeah because i love it i know it's pretty interesting um but i a friend of mine went to jail before right Multiple times. He'd just go for like a year. Yeah, he's time. your best friend. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> he might have the same name as you, right? Um, yeah. So anyways, so like he would, he used to say this to me. I thought it was the most interesting thing. He used to say that um, the way you look in jail is very important. Oh, yeah, the, you told me this. And I don't think I've ever talked about it in the podcast, but he's saying the way you look, the way you Where dress. You, you wouldn't think it matter. Yeah, your, your, your clothes have to be clean, neat, and organized. Yeah. You need to be put together very well, haircut and everything. And I was thinking... Yeah. There's no women there. Who cares? <laughs> That's and he's like, no, it does matter. And he goes, he goes, the men actually care a lot more about what other men think. Oh, right. And then right, this, right, like, right. I heard it was uh, confirmed by uh, Jordan Peterson. Not to say he. Oh, because he things. says if you bring a woman, wait, say you're saying say. that the men compete right. um, within their right. own hierarchy with each other, and then they create the social hierarchy of of levels, and then the women look to this hierarchy and go, he is, has high status as this yeah. person. And so then you basically, the men hash it out themselves. Does this happen in Portland, Oregon? <laughs> nothing, nothing consistent Does with this the happen universe. in San Francisco. No, nothing, the, nothing with the universe is consistent in Portland or <laughs> does this San happen Francisco? with a certain segment of the population or just with men who like to be men and women who like, who, you know, I don't know, but I love the prison stuff. So keep going. Uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm just, there are s s parts of society on the political spectrum where this, I don't think 
makes as much sense and when it yeah. does, sometimes does. I did not mean to cut you off. All right, leading, okay, and the environment. So what are the um, environmental, environmental impacts, impacts on the behavior? He has not at his house, which should make him be less aggressive or dominant or reactive, right? He's on Prince's turf, so that should be less. It wasn't. Yeah. Hence, he should be corrected. Whereas at his house, I would give him some leeway. Okay, what are the other environmental impacts? Maybe it's like he's going to a new jail, though. Like, remember, he was... You've got to come in and... and yeah. <laughs> I think you might be right. He's got a jail. He's already in jail at his current right. house. Right, right, He's right, going right. to a new jail. Right. Maybe that's the mentality he has. Yeah. He wasn't at the board train, by the way. He's just coming to my house, but there are fences up. Like, it's sort of... Maybe it feels like, yeah, there's fences He's like, here. oh, this is uh, D-Block right here. I'm walking up yeah. to. Yeah. So, you're right. There might be some aspect of, like, you know, go in and punch the biggest, baddest guy right away. What would happen if you took 20 of these dogs yeah. and you left them alone like Lord of the Flies? No humans? Like what What type of stuff do you think they would do like in nature? Yeah, go, go. I mean, there's videos online and they're generally in the streets and there, there's still fights, but like everyone works their stuff out. Right. They get they get their groups. And then this guy's the head of this group. I mean, you'll see in streets in Mexico and stuff like rival dog gangs are like meeting. And then you attack this rival gang there. His whole gang comes after you. And then they go back to their corners but it's and a they pack, right? live like nature. Yeah, it's a pack, though. But yeah. if you got 20 of these guys together, there would be a pack established. Shit. Stuff would be established. What'd you just say? <laughs> stuff would be established. Stuff would be established. Yeah. Yeah. So there would be a, I always a pecking order. Yeah, um, there'd be a pecking order. I think people understand. But what that I'm that sounds like a dominance thing. Yeah, but that's only between dog to dog. There's no dog to human. So can I address that real quick? So so dog to human thing. Um, it's different. Dog to dog, we all know exists. Zach George don't says, and I don't I don't want to like like go through every like little nitpicky thing. I think he says it's critical different from dog to human. <laughs> While I acknowledge that certain behaviors such as mounting may be interpreted. And he's right. Mounting is certainly not always dominant. It's, I, I think it's females fun. sometimes do that, don't they? Yeah, but that can still be dominance. But it, mounting is also sexual at times. It's like actually like, I mean, in proper perspective, it should be right. Yeah, I mean, in proper, but it can be a dominance thing, right? Maybe interpret the context to dog to dog dominance. All right. And he's right. It's critical to differ in this from the human dog dynamic, recognizing dominance in dogs can lead to. So he's kind of saying it's it's different in dogs to people. And it is. But to act, there's a dominance describes a set of behaviors. That's all it does. I, I can come up with another word. That's fine. I, I could do it. I just don't want to to succumb to the um, uh, to the word police. The like thing. it's just against my will. So I'm going to probably just keep saying it the matter they get, because um, that's how that's how I am. Um, but it's just a set of behaviors, right? There are there are dogs where you go, hey, can I have this toy back? And they go, I will freaking bite you. Not because I care about the toy, but because I run this house. And if you don't think that exists, you got to go to more Cane Corso and Dogo Argentino houses. And then you will very quickly walk out of those houses. You go to another one, You maybe the third house you walk out of, you're going to go, maybe I'm not going to post this quite on that guy's channel like I did. My, I'm changing my thoughts a little bit. But if you ain't in those houses, I get the post. I get it. I'm wondering, though, as far as like the I mounting get, I get piece, the, the comment. Because the mounting also happens in prison as well. <laughs> yeah, it's a similar thing, right? Like no females, kind of males. Yeah, so there is some, there is a bit of that going on. You you it's told me, though, thing. that like you educated me on California prison system. And it was very, it was very interesting. Not that you'd been there, but you watch yeah. all these. Well, yeah, and I, I sent you the one of the. Um, it's very organized, guard. which I like. Yeah, it's like violently <laughs> organized. Yeah, but it's organized. There's yeah. not, you know, a lot of crazy. But there are rules. There's mean, rules. There's rules for follow a the rules, and you might you might get out of there okay. Yeah. Without, yeah. you know, the shower stuff going down, which is really my number one reason not to go to prison. I've got a honest. number of reasons not to go to prison. That's number one. What of the potential of being yes. violated yes. or mounted? Yes, that's it. That's really my main. Well, I have a lot of reasons not to go, but, but you wouldn't if you wouldn't be a predator in there, right? You wouldn't be <laughs> violent. Imagine. People. I think you would. You would. You would use your influence to like in your. I'd status be like to be. Like, I have a hun five hundred people on YouTube. Five hundred K, gentlemen. Five hundred K. Yeah, I know five hundred. Whatever. However, they're not going to be impressed with five hundred. Those guys have five hundred. 
on TikTok. Oh, uh, 500,000, right? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 we're not doing that. We're not, we're not going to prison. Okay. okay. So uh, let's keep it rolling. All right. Leading Move to on. more compassion as, so let's just, just take it. Do you want to go to the second part of his thing? Yeah, it's, I'm over it. Okay. Hold then on. people are like, okay. Um, yeah. The, the Zach George, you didn't say anything. I read this twice. Would love to learn more. It, it is a lot of words, right? I mean, let's be clear. If you I'm can, not, it, I don't want to be, you know, rude to, to Zach or anything like that or anybody. No. Reading anything on Instagram is so exhausting. <laughs> it's like it's not meant to be read. Like the way that they have it all structured is not, like you have to click more comments yeah. just to get the rest of the comments. Like it's very, all right. there's a reason they've set it up so crappily. Um, if that's a word, um, this girl understands him. Sounds like she's, um, she's, she's with him. She's supporting, but then he, he has another one. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. He says he, at Zach George at Zach George, uh, he, commented he really himself. appreciates your response. He appreciates his own response. He must've, I think accidentally. <laughs> he did. He's replying to someone. <laughs> or maybe he's replying to himself. I'm not sure. The issue today is this. Unfortunately, oh. many so-called dog trainers are using dominance as an excuse to be overly physical. Hey, can we stop for a second? With dogs in non-productively or ways long term. This is a funny thing that I've heard before. And he's he's me either talk he might be talking about me as a so-called dog trainer, or he might be talking about like I'm not saying you, but there's others. I don't know what he's saying. I don't think he's talking about you. Okay. I would hope not. I mean, yeah, you're, because you're not well, a so-called dog trainer. Yeah, that's bro, the, so. that's the, but that is a line that if you read the comments on my thing, so super ultra po super positive force free folks, they'll go, this isn't dog training. And it's always confused me. Like they cannot like me and not like my methods, but this isn't dog training. That's the notion that dog training is essentially shaping behavior through um, um, successive approximations with Environmental management. Wait, what? So they. What did you just say? Successive approximations. Shaping behavior through successive approximations. That is, that is, the, that is how you shape behavior. Clickers, treats you. You train a calm. What's up with the successive approximation piece? Uh, of it? Because you you basically successive meaning coming after successive. Yes, you sort of build on this, and it's everything's operant. It's very operant, right? Watch Le Emily Laurelham. She's very good. I have. It's funny. She's kind of like pushed Zach George into this fight of like, and like the, what the more animal rights ish. Kind. Yeah. Like, like, Hey Zach. Yeah. Like go get him. Like go get these guys. Do you have, and like, things? she's in, I have, you know I have this? some things to say about her. How do you know that? Bro? I know a lot of stuff. How um, do you know that they're connected? Are they connected or does, is that common knowledge or? Oh, well, it's not I common don't even to know you. Who she like is. you don't do this for a living. True. Yeah. I know her. I met her. I have a story oh, okay. about meeting her. That is so, pretty funny. So she knows Zach. I don't know if she knows him, but she's a super force free folks. She trains her own dogs in her house. Like, but Zach's not force free. Oh, I mean, you define, how do you define? Force he uses free? a leash. So that's force. Yeah. But yeah, that's a silly, it's, it's an argument. I'm not going to get into the silly normal continue, arguments. Continue. That's, that's a whole nother story. Um, training is not um, shaping behavior with positive reinforcement. That is one aspect of training. Hmm. Um, just teaching heal with, with treats is not, there are many ways to train. You might disagree with those ways, but it's still training. Yeah. They, they sort of, it's kind of like, it's like, you're not a, yeah. oh, you, you don't believe what I believe politically. Like you're not, you're not even a person. Like, yeah. like you're just dismissing yeah. them and anything they do or say, like, you're not, you're not even yeah, it is on training. my level. But it, it is training. For example, like you could that's say, what I'm saying. It's training. You may hate you it. You could say like still training. We were talking about working out. We we're talking about this before the podcast. Like kettlebells. Like you could say kettlebells are not yeah training. You're like you lift way heavy weights. Yeah, I mean clearly I don't lift that heavy weights, but yeah. um, well, not you or but whoever. Yeah, you. But you get the point. But like so, for instance, so you could say that um, Pilates or whatever. You could just let's use kettlebells. Yeah, yeah. Kettlebells. Yeah. You could say that is not the most effective training modality right yeah that be, may be true yeah but to say that it's not training <laughs> yeah I and mean, if you do it for 20 minutes you're like that is some form of training yeah so just the same way yeah that's you are training dogs whether you are effective um and then i also don't you think that there's a uh continuum pretty obvious continu continuum with dog trainers right there is the farthest for sure. force free there for is sure. the um and i don't think we've talked emily about laurelham who has um kiko pop 
on um whatever on on youtube yeah she would be in my opinion the farthest you can humanly possibly go one way mm -hmm. she's super knowledgeable what's she, her name emily laurelham she's over here and then you could say the e collar turned to a hundred would be over here where's dog daddy on that mix where's my thing dog daddy dog daddy's like do well, it in re in result of the way that it shows on the which stream. one's this the well, super the one, punishing the one the one for me will be the laurel ham lady right here that way they can see oh okay so yeah, um, right dog there. daddy's, oh, look, dog daddy's team. there dog daddy's okay there. he's halfway on the other side of the, yeah neutral middle here neutral. yeah yeah blow, neutrals here blow of, of yeah range. but i don't know i see dog daddy's videos i see the videos to your point of him like the ones that get the views yeah. i don't know when he was sitting here with us i was like this guy's knows what he's doing and he's showing the videos of him doing his stuff to get the views yeah i did this guy's a smart guy i did yeah i who did immersed himself in dogs for 10 years the one thing i took away from that when he was talking i was like this guy's absolutely obsessed with, with dogs. dogs and dog training and like his whole brazilian background and just like with dogs yeah. all the time um that that's what i took away from it but i was also like this guy is literally dedicated every minute of his life to that and that was yeah that's and what i might, took away you might disagree with him but, but he uh, knows a lot about you individual can't dogs too like he knew the the nuances to the way that they are and the breeds and stuff i'm yeah. surprised about that yeah you know yeah Anyways. you might disagree with him and I where are you too. on that spectrum here's neutral yes I'm I say here. I say you're right. Yeah, you're just I'm here. If you look at that punishment based on this video that we just played, it is the nicest correction in the world. Yeah. You know what I do to that dog? I go, yeah. I go, go ahead. Go ahead. I go, ah, ah. <laughs> See, I go, knock it off. <laughs> I'm gonna defend. You're I'm gonna bro, defend you're myself. You're resisting. Keep, like keep you did not it. give in. You can't grab. It. <laughs> I'm trying to make a point, bro. It was like you. That was very bro, awkward. You out. did not like I'm that. So out. so I grabbed it and I'm like, I'm here. like, made him look at me and I go, also, I go, I'm knock this out. off. I, I'm I'm out of here, bro. I'm out of here. <laughs> Where are you going? And I go, knock this, knock this nonsense off. This was that was not a real <laughs> correction. So. You left. I was looking for a reason to <laughs> go get a soda, and that was perfect. All right. What I missed. Sorry. All right. So, okay. The, is that does that make sense? Yeah. But let's. Um, I want to get to there's was a different the part it was, of this. It was well, it was nice. So that correction was barely well, over, barely over here on the side of neutral. Well, suppression is easy to accomplish. That is not oh the same gosh. as long term behavior modification. Oh, Far this too is many the funniest argument. Dominance as being the issue and harsh corrections being the answer. Now you just kind of alluded to that as you tried to molest me, more or less. Is that, is that um, I accosted you? Is that as I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's right. not really a harsh correction. I mean, especially from a dog point of view, but even from yeah. a human point of view, like I just did it to you. That's not going to probably get you a charge, you know, in public. It's not going to get you anything. I I grabbed your face, and I know you, and yeah. I know that dog. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not going to press charges after this, but so send this, you to prison. This argument is the funniest argument to me and i have to take it seriously i i just can't not right i've heard it too many times decompose it suppression is the is easy to accomplish that is not the same as long-term behavior modification the question would be okay. is it even easy to accomplish though it yeah. might not actually be as easy as i don't think people he's never even, done it how would yeah. he know if it's easy to accomplish because yeah. i make it look easy he yeah. wouldn't know what, what because he's i don't think he's ever done it if he has you should come on and say, I've tried this and it didn't work. But well, so it's not the same as long-term behavior modification. Awesome. Awesome. I need to learn. I need, I need education. I, I need Emily Laurelham, any, all of them, please. I, I, I beg of you. I'm ready to learn from my, the masters. I'd like a video on you showing me how to take this dog. And, and have long-term behavior modification. I want long-term behavior modification, but I want you to show me. But you want that can dog. Can you show me? Yeah, no, no, that could, dog. They could use that particular dog, right? Because you've and they'd even I'll, have a head start because you've already worked with it. Okay, but they don't want. Okay, we'll get. They don't want my dirty prints on that dog. We'll get you a new Malinois, and we'll send it to you, and you can show me 
long-term behavior modification and how it should be done. I would love it. I'm, I'm not being mean. I'm taking your own words. Please show us. So I would love to see it. So you got to get someone else's dog and you can film it. It may take a year. I realize it's going to be tough to video and edit. I know it's a not, not an easy thing, but you, you kind of got to show it if you're going to come in. You got to show me the melanoma. Far too many oversimplified dominances being the issue and harsh corrections being the answer. I, I agree. I agree with him. But Far I would, too many I do would think say that, that you're, you that's do not, not have me, though. harsh corrections. <laughs> that's, that's, especially on neither this, would I, especially on the, especially spectrum. on this video, especially on the spectrum. I grabbed the dog by the face. I just grabbed you by the face. I know, but I didn't like it. I know. So maybe that's like, a, I've, I'm agreeing with Zach on this point. <laughs> All right. But I don't like people touching my face. I know. And I, I just grabbed your face. I know it's weird. <laughs> We've known each other for 15 years. Maybe in like 30 years, I'd be okay with it. But you, okay. It seems you a bit would, too intimate. You know, it was, it was, you I didn't like feel that way because I was like <laughs> trying to like move you. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was like my jujitsu background. Expect was like, trying you're like, to tense but it's up. me. But anyway, you're like a no. dog. You're like, I'm not being touched. No, I, of course. I'm like this Malino. What's his, oh, we can't we say No, he, he, he gave in. You would expect this as an un, you know, un, oh yeah, that's his new thing. He doesn't, he wants the regulation. I'm down with the regulated industry. Let's put at the top of that industry, um, let's take pay, take 10 people. Okay. We're going to take uh, Karen Pryor. No, we'll do, how about this? We'll do Joel. We'll do me. Even though you do not belong on this, on this list. No, but I, I have good ideas. You don't belong. But on I have this good list. ideas. See, this is not, you're not taking this seriously. <laughs> And this needs to be taken seriously. Okay. Dog daddy? No. You can't take dog daddy. You have to do it by subscribers. No. This is not a YouTube. You don't take this stuff seriously. I take it seriously. You ready? Okay. How would you do Karen it? Pryor. Okay. Check. Car check. Super. Owns a school. Super positive. She gets four voting member spots. No. She gets one. Oh, okay, okay. We're doing 10 people. Karen Pryor. Emily Laurelham. One of the best um, shapers of behavior. Zach Ultra George. positive. Zach George. Boom. Three. Um, I don't know. Let's put Ken Ramirez on there. Okay. Yeah. We're going to, I'm going full. You guys get whoever the heck you want. And then we'll take a board member from one of these. How about Robert that they love. No, we're not done then. So that's five. Then we're going to do Joel Beckman, Caesar Milan. I gave you your five. Oh, Here it's you. a draft. I don't know. Okay. Joel Beckman, Caesar, Caesar Milan, um, Will Atherton, Tom Davis, and, uh, no, did you say Robert Cabral or no? And Robert Cabral. No, what Wait, about did you say? What about did you Garrett, say Wayne? Garrett? No, Garrett. Okay. Garrett doesn't make it. Someone's got to get cut. No, Garrett makes it. So take someone off the list. It's I'm not hard gonna, to I'm cut. not going to choose. There, there, there. I'm, I'm down. You Let's do out, it. You left out Dog Daddy. I know Dog Daddy. He is okay. Dog Daddy can be in whatever because we had him on the podcast. Is, I mean, anyone who's on the podcast should be. <laughs> if you come on the podcast, you're in. See, but then I should be on it too because I've been on the, all these podcasts. Yeah, but, you know. You should not be in this. You should not be in. Who is going to bring say. the prison stuff to that conversation? That's true. You're, that's true. So there's our list. I'm down, dude. Okay. But I have a feeling all my all the people that the second half of the people would say okay to this, and the first half would go no, no, no. Those horrible people cannot be in our group. We need to only it select. Like and we'd be like, hey, let's let's kind of come up with really good rules. They're really good for dogs, and like. You know, you can, you, it's okay to grab a dog and say, hey, knock that, not, knock that nonsense off. And the other group's going to go, so you can never do that. But is it like Congress? It's going to be just like deadlock? It's, oh, yeah. We need six people. No, but it needs no, we to need, be deadlocked. We need 11 people. It needs to be 10 and just deadlocked all the time. So everything so nothing ever the, gets done. Yeah, just like it is. Uh, okay, you expect so, this in unregulated industry, but I'm here to point it out. He's here to point it out. So he's, that's good. But, but I mean, maybe, I mean, we should have him on. I mean, I think we should at least make sure that you know, he, if knows. he wants to come on, he can come because on. here's the thing, but I'm just, I'm just here to point it out. So I'm just saying, is he, but is he saying that your corrections are harsh? Cause I didn't see them in the video. I mean, there are dog trainers that do harsh corrections. I don't dis we don't disagree with that. Yeah. Um, you'd expect this in an unregulated industry, but I'm here to point it out. That's his job. For example, we have seen Joel use oh. inappropriate. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, we have you seen Joel this. use inappropriate choke chain leash. Corrections I don't think I've ever used the under choke the chain guys in my life of being i'm being more dominant back i don't think he knows who you are dude i think yeah i don't i think that's a like dog daddy or something maybe yeah this is because dog daddy i uses don't think i've ever prong once used a choke chain 
You don't use like prong one collars time. either, though. I know, but I think I've left a prong on when the owner showed up for 10 minutes before I took it off. I don't think I've ever not taken off a choke chain. Like, as soon as they show up with a choke chain, I'm like, like take this it off. thing is horrible. Okay. I can explain why it's horrible. I, I dislike them more than most things. Wait, who's this guy? So here's some idiot here. Oh, Beckman. Oh, that's Joel you. Beckman. Never mind. Uh, and I, I agree said, with much of your first comment, this is what less of your I second said. comment for a variety of reasons. Yeah. One of which I don't use the choke chains no, nor recommend them. This is a pretty complex issue to discuss in IG comments. That's a hell of a point. I do think this is an interesting. interesting discussion. If you'd like to discuss further, I'd like to have you as a video guest on the podcast to share your views and have a respectful dialogue. Yeah. That was a nice invite. Wasn't that nice? But here's the thing. I think this is what he probably doesn't get. Where? Wait, wait. Did he comment back? I don't know. Where, don't where did he so. go? <laughs> what here's, here's my thing. I don't <laughs> he just think... He like, makes his statements and He bolts. probably legit thinks that if he was on here that we would try to roast him or catch him off guard, which is not I don't not think so. Case. I don't think he thinks that. No. No. I mean, I'd ask like, him questions. I mean... We would ask him questions. I mean, if the goal is to make things... I mean, you have you know, almost 500,000 subs on just the YouTube stuff, right? Have done almost no effort at trying to grow any other platforms, right? No. I mean, we don't even post on that stuff. I mean, you just started posting on Instagram and got... Yeah, I mean, like I post a million a while, views, but... Yeah. But nothing. Yeah, yeah, nothing. yeah, yeah, yeah. You were doing like freaking Jack Nicholas or you can't handle a Malinois like memes. Memes. That was like a year ago, but yeah, but yeah it was yeah. like nothing. You were yeah. posting nothing. Like it was not a strategy. Yeah, yeah. Of anything. Whereas yeah. Like YouTube, you actually post stuff. So um, anyways, so it says, uh, let's see what else. My um, last three Instagram posts have probably gotten a million and five views total. Like, like combined. Like my last four five, posts. 1. Yeah. 1. 5, like yeah. crazy amount of views in my last four posts. Yeah. But you're putting, you're putting good I'm content fine out rather than just not doing anything. But even like we were talking about, um, x or twitter and we're like hey what about putting all the content on there and then we're like well who cares bro yeah it's just there's there's it just distracts us uh lynn wood says i would definitely like to see the both of you in a civil and respectful discussion on the oh, podcast see jack george i'm not sure if you've seen the whole video but joel never said asserting dominance was a one size oh. fits all yeah. hey props to her That's you should have her on there this guy says hot dogs that Living is not woods. funny um respect thank you <laughs> I'd watch that debate. It's not a debate, I don't think. No. It says, which podcast, Joel? Which podcast do you think, Tony underscore AV? Mine I don't even think there I, is I'd another in, podcast. Oh, yeah. We're the only one. I don't think he has a podcast, though. Oh. Um, oh, this guy likes it. A bunch of... Zach George, I used to watch your videos on a lot on YouTube to see how you handle working dogs. Sadly, the range of your work doesn't extend that far into the depths of real working dog. You are like a happy-go-lucky version of Caesar Milan. That's, a per, that's kind of a compliment <laughs> with proper training. I don't, I don't and I say that. that in the most respectful way possible. However, when it comes to LSD, what's LSD? Working dogs. Oh. Um, and a training a dog for work uh, and high drive in general, I think you you fall flat. Haven't seen enough of your videos, et cetera, All et cetera. Right, so I'm so, not a fan of that. Sure. Yeah. So it seems oh, like... Oh, there's a lot. I mean, dominance a, does definitely exist. Okay, there's a lot. There's a lot of comments. Right? Yeah, there's a ton of them. I mean, but yeah, I do think the ultimate, you know, point is that, I mean, the invites out there. So Zach, if and it there, doesn't matter to me. No, of like course really, not. like none of this. Stuff I don't has care if he bearing. comes or doesn't come. No, it's not some giant views grab to have Zach George on here. It it really is not. No. I'm not gonna get rich off of a dog Zach daddy George interview. Dog daddy had is thirty thousand views. Yeah, it is not the, a big. He was the by far largest. He's the largest presence of social media person besides Caesar Milan. He did and thirty thousand. Um, yeah, but he still has more than Zach. If you look at the, all the podcasts. Oh, really? But if oh. but he, but even still, you put him in the same bucket. It's close. It still didn't do more numbers than the Bosco podcast. Yeah, where I talked about how to raise my own dogs or how Bosco died or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't. It, it doesn't literally doesn't matter. matter to me. And I, I think, don't care. I mean, not to say we have to explain this, but right. But the fact that you know, if people think that we are doing this podcast for money, you are out of your. I should have you edit no this one, out. You're out people of your really effing think that. mind. Do people really think that though? But I just think we should be clear. Oh. Like this is a labor of love, and. It's, it was a mistake. 
<laughs> All right. This podcast <laughs> is a was an idea that I had and was trying to get Joel to do it for a couple of years. Oh, yeah, I guess. And then we eventually decided we're going to do it. And then the only reason we're doing it still is like we have like as we said a few we would. thousand people who love it. Like love it. Like, and we love them. And we love them. And if we took it, I believe that they would be sad. And that's why we're doing it. We're not I, doing it. No, I I, I, I wake up it. every morning when I do any type of work for this podcast. Yeah, I do it for the Dynamarts out there. And the, I do it for the off grid dogs. The R Patrick's. I do it for the R. <laughs> I do it for those people. Do it for King's mom. I do it for that Alec McKinnon for that lady mm -hmm. McKinnon. Mainly I do, I do it for, for off grid dogs. He right. comments on every like every comment. He comments. Not everyone like one in five. But that's a lot of comments when there's 400 comments. He's commenting on a hundred of them. Yeah. But that's, I mean, it is it just gives us two cents. It is. It is a labor of love. It's not something that is going to. Yeah. Not only is it going to make us rich, it's going to make us poor is what's going to happen. So it's like It'll the only the rich. only thing I think about is any guest we can we can assure that any guest that comes on will be treated with respect. Um, it won't be uh, taken out of context. People are always all of our guests. We've told Dog Daddy. Garrett Wing, all them. Hey, you all want all of our guests? You want to use? Uh, well, I mean, we don't want to have people on that don't that aren't mm -hmm. meaningful in the I business. Know. I know. If you want, you know, here's a download. Like Garrett, say, like, hey, here's a download of the I don't podcast. Really want if you want to um, use this for any purposes, yeah, yeah. knock yourself out. Yeah. Here, here's the thumbnail. Have Go fun. Right? Same, same, same to Zach. Yeah. You use whatever part of it you want. Yeah. You could also do like one of those. Um, remember the person that did all the the cuts of you. What was it? The um, we'll do, oh, this, yeah. all we'll do this all day. We'll do this all day. Yeah. Have you seen the ones where they do? They make people like Trump say something, or they make them like sing a song. Have you ever seen this? Yeah, they like cut up a word to make a yeah, whole and they sentence pitch, or a they song. pitch shift it. It's so it's take a, a year. To it do must it. take forever to do that. So. so are we done with this Instagram um, yeah. post? Um, so Zach calling it. We didn't hear from him after that. We invited him nicely on the podcast. Again, I could care less if he does it or doesn't do it. I just think if he wants to get his word out there. And wants to. This is a great platform. Shout out from it. the rooftop. It's a good platform for it. Yeah, it's not great. It's like, not great. There's like, there's exactly. bigger if you platforms. You want to talk about, but it's a good one. Dog training because it's not good because of the the the, the zillions of views you get. It's good <laughs> because, and it might get a second, but it's good because it's a you're you're not scared to talk to somebody who 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 may, is smart about stuff. And is is willing to to ask you things, and you're willing to like go toe to toe, for lack of a better word. You don't you don't look scared. Yeah. You look open to the talk, like Ben Shapiro and Bill Maher, or like yeah. you know you could these people. The strong people do this. Yeah, the weak people avoid it. So, have you ever heard the term "cut a promo" before? I've heard. I know what a promo is, and I know what cutting it is. Cutting a promo, like th this is what they call cutting a promo in WWF. Oh. It's like right before, if you want to get that fight, that title title shot, like after, you know, you win, you're in the ring and they'll be like, hey, you know, UFC, whatever. Yeah. And they'll be like, that's your opportunity to cut a promo. Like this is like going to be used on ads and stuff. Oh. Like, you know, like, like Chael Did Sonnen. Did I just do that? Chael Sonnen. No, we should cut one right now. And like mm. Chael Sonnen would be like, Anderson Silva. Oh yeah. You are a piece of whatever, right? Yeah. Here's the prompt. No, but this would be great. Because hey, I, right. I, have, I have an idea. Let's just cut a promo real quick. Okay. okay? We're going to okay. cut a promo. Okay, ready? You want to start or you want what me to start? What are we going to say? I'm going to start it right. I'll just start it. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Here's the, here's my cutting of a promo. Okay. Zach George, Eric here from Beckman Unleashed podcast. I'd like to invite you on to discuss your comments on the Instagram video. Uh, if you'd like to talk about dogs, dog training, we could talk about regulation, lack of regulation. We could talk about chemtrails. We could talk about global warming. We could talk about what else do we talk about on this podcast? Wild animals, wild animals, prison, parenting, prison, parenting, parenting is okay. It's not bad. We talk we about, talk about prison. What else do we talk about? What did we talk about last week? We talk about conspiracy theories, conspiracy theories, but not like Vaccines. we're conspiracy theorists. We don't want to, you know, we no. just, we just no. talk about them, which no. you should talk about. Them. Oh, flat earth. If you have uh, anything That's on flat earth. Yeah. Like the earth's not flat, then we can. We can also agree if we both believe that it is a sphere. Yeah, which I think we all do. I'm not, but I don't want to put words in his mouth. You got to help me with Zach the promo. George thinks that the world is flat. 
The answer is no. I don't want to put words in his mouth. Well, you're being very respectful. You don't know. I don't know. No, I, I think he probably doesn't think I mean, that. flat earth is like basically to, you know, to believe something in the face of overwhelming evidence. Yes. Oh, okay. Interesting. He may. Could be a flat earther. That could be the um, thumbnail for this podcast. Yeah. Zach George, flat earth. <laughs> We should do that just to be fun. Oh, what boy. the hell happened to this podcast, Joel? I don't know. You just cut a promo. We tried to cut a promo. <laughs> I did more of the promo cutting than you did. Here, you. I you didn't cut, even know what cutting you cut a, a promo, promo meant. You cut one. You cut one. Oh, it's going to be really boring. Let's hear it. I just. I already did. I said Zach George. Oh yeah, I got to look at the camera. Zach George, we would like to invite you on the podcast. We can talk about. Well, but we can't talk about anything he wants. It's it's our podcast. Yeah, but if he wants to talk about Flat Earth, we'll talk about it. Uh, yeah, we get into some discussions about fun things. People can learn your personality a little bit, not just on dog training, but on life, on parenting, on um, raising of dogs, on different um, types of breeds, different breeds. We do a breed of the week, right? We can ask you about uh, um, maybe a um, like a Dogo Argentino or something. Yeah. Breed, breed of the week that week. Let's do it. Yeah, we'll ask him, you know, things like that. Um, we could ask him about um, dominance. And, um, you know, I think we've answered a lot of it here, but we could ask him about that. You know? But hopefully he would watch this podcast so he could get a feel for the direction that we're coming from. Yeah, he should. Or one of them. He could. I would probably before I go on a podcast. You like know? maybe maybe watch this podcast just to help out, like just to watch this podcast if uh, there's a show called Locked Up or Lock Up on TV, <laughs> you got to prepare for the prison talk on this podcast. <laughs> that is something you have to prepare for. Yeah. Yeah. There's several just, I mean, if you just type in like prison I'd say, experience. I'd say you also have to prepare for the amount of wild animals being killed of videos we're going to show on here. Yeah. Right. We're going to show a, a, a hippopotamus being eaten by hyenas. Is there dominance involved in that or no? No. It's usually just like wanting to eat, right? It's it's all it is. Yeah, but sometimes they kill and don't even eat, right? Certain animals. Oh, well, that's for killing. They're they're killing machines. Like that the fox will go in the hen house, kill all the chickens because it can. But does but it's it not eat dominant. Them or no? And to that point, actually, you bring up a good point. I bring up a ton dominance of good on this thing. Intraspecies, right, is a thing. And then as it goes out of that, it's like, why wouldn't a leopard and a wolf or puma and a wolf or whatever mountain lion and a wolf have dominance between the two they don't they don't it's for it's for resources and area and mating rights like within the species i mean um but like between them it's just for resources and to sort of control an area for food but the human dog relationship is like nothing else on earth there is no species that is really as attuned to or close to the 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 relationship between a dog and a person. So Not these true. lines get get blurred of 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 dominance because of the human dog relationship is a very special and unique one. Not, Not true. true. Tell me, I might be wrong. So there's like I don't know if it was like hippopotamus or something, but they have these like and the birds. sucker fish. Oh yeah, there's these birds yeah. on them, and yeah, then yeah. also like those whales that have those little fishes that like yeah. eat crap off of them. They are close. They are they are close. What is that called a symbiotic relationship? Symbiotic. I learned that symbiotic. in uh, yeah biology. But uh, it's a diff. That's different. Aren't you a bio? Aren't you a wildlife biologist? Essentially, you you are self you're a self educated biologist. I am. Right? I'd have a biologist on here any day and talk to them about the, their you know stuff. I, you I'd know. like to have a psychologist or the person who's like gonna gonna act like they know everything about operant conditioning and positive reinforcement. All right, let's talk about the application. I went to Harvard for it. Okay, let's talk about. Uh, how it applies. I invited the, and the problems with it. I invited the guys from the, uh, well, I forgot the name of the podcast was, um, T uh, tooth and claw podcast. I emailed the guy, but mm -hmm. I didn't hear back. Um, you but, tell I, him. but my, my wife had said that they had some issue where they got, I guess they did some NPR thing or something and it blew up. And so they were like, not, they were like you where you don't answer your, your emails. Oh. So then they were like, Hey, sorry, we got busy or whatever. But they said so, that to you. They said it on the podcast and to my you? wife, my wife told me. That about us i told my, my wife knew that i had reached out to them that's cool and so then she's listening to the podcast and they said we did this npr thing 
we literally oh, haven't been able to check anything. They didn't say it to you, though. No. They just said it in general. I thought they said, no, Beckman's no, no. dog training, sorry we didn't get back to you. No, no, they didn't get back to us. Yeah, I'm not down with this podcast. But the guy's like a biologist. I'm not down. We should throw that down the Bro, gauntlet if, to if them. Someone got, if someone emailed us about the podcast and they had, they had 500,000 YouTube people, I'd get back to them. They're just like, we're not getting back to anyone. I, here's what I have to say. I'm going to cut a promo. <laughs> hey, you guys, you guys mess with the bull, you get the horns. That's Tooth and Claw and Horns podcast. Yeah, you guys mess with the wrong bull. Um, what else you got here? Oh, can I talk about this? This is a totally different direction, but it's on dog. It's time to go apologize. a different direction. Okay, you good? Yeah. Okay, should I cut any more promos or are we good? Please don't off? cut another promo. <laughs> They're not going well. Off-grid dogs. Oh. Five days ago. In 2003, a study was finally conducted on dog vaccines. Dog vaccines. And it was found that vets were grossly over-vaccinating dogs by recommending annual vaccination. This was a huge no revenue stream for the industry, but made dogs sick. If your vet is ethical, he should recommend tighter testing to see if the antibodies are sufficient before revaccinating, since many dogs are good for years or even for a lifetime once vaccinated. He is absolutely right. <laughs> he is absolutely right. I actually looked up the the study or at least the oh really you find it study. um this was the day that he posted that so um and there's this is recorded on tuesday and posted on thursday just if anyone's trying to do the math on five days but yeah um that's a pretty powerful thing he said i think like yeah but it, do you expect anything else like do we really expect yeah. vets to be like okay let's change this whole thing it's f it's been done it is f up. Like if you are doing something, it is. Hey, if you're doing That's something that is is um unethical, hurting dogs. So, well, no, yeah. Let's let's take it like okay. a step further. And I would love to hear what Zach has to say on this too, because we can talk about he it. He loves the animal welfare piece, and so to me, yeah. Let's look at what happens to the dogs, because the thing is, is yeah, the vets I think are pretty big a lot on the vaccination piece, right? Yeah. And so the thing is, if you're doing, if you sell something that is what would you call it? Not neutral, but what's the term when it's like ineffective, essentially ineffective. So you, you have something for sale that's ineffective. That is just like placebo. Essentially you're selling, you're selling sugar pills, you know, should you face consequences for that? Probably, but not severe consequences, not the same oh, way as selling cyanide, selling something. <laughs> yeah. Cyanide, right. something that hurts. Something. Right. 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 So when you actually, um, create harm in a population whether that's mm. dogs or humans what if what if your school told you and gave you studies that's told you that that nothing bad happens when you over vaccinate a dog and maybe those studies if you looked into it are from kind of weird places and you're like huh but you never really looked into it and what if they told you that then are you off the hook well you know what i would say i yeah. would say well why would you say over vaccinated them Okay. Well, let's say they don't say that, but like, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's, you know, it's amazing though. So like generally most people that believe in a, in a spherical earth, they believe that that one year is defined as the amount of time it takes for the earth to travel completely around the sun and back. What is are the mean? chances? I mean, just think of this for a second. Think of the chances of what are the chances that the earth, the amount of time it takes to spin completely around the sun and come back to where it started yeah. is the exact same amount of times you should uh, vaccinate your dog. Oh, isn't that a coincidence? Well, something happens when the earth reaches that point within your dog that makes them need it again. That must be the case. So is it? No, like, that I get your point. Is it that's a, an interesting is it a radiation point. Thing? Anything that's done annually or monthly, it's like. Yeah, I, I know. know. So how, but that's a question. That is an interesting. Ask. That's a great point. Eric. How it's like? How how do you know? That's a, year? a great point. How? Why not two years? Yeah. Why not six months? That's a great. Point. Three months. What how about? Well, how about every day? <laughs> how about every day? What about vaccinations every the day? More the dog better. vaccinations. The more the better. Always say no dog disease. Vac Always say dog before vaccination. No disease ever. Yeah. You will not get. You will not get parvo. If you get a parvo vaccine every day, it's kind of like those, those things they talk about with wine, you know, glass of wine with dinner. It's great for you. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Really? So how about two glasses? It's like, oh, that's fine too. <laughs> three, three too much. How do you know three too much? How about 10? How about 10 a night? 
no no that's bad so you don't have any data you're just basically saying one or two is fine yeah that's all good points it's like smoking cigarettes nothing wrong with smoking one right no or any other tobacco product yeah Maybe like zen or something remember how we were talking about um how we weren't gonna get any sponsors ever <laughs> Yeah, that's still the case. Yeah, but imagine if we decided to go like Breaking Bad style and we're like started doing like Marlboro commercials and stuff. Uh, if Marlboro paid us enough money, I would smoke Marlboros, I think. I would smoke. You guys get... I hey, used to smoke Ar, What is it? What were the two? R.J. Reynolds? And oh, then what was school. the other one? Philip Morris is the other two. Yeah. R.J. Reynolds. I probably made myself look super old, but that's I don't it. know if they're around R.J. Reynolds. Are they still around? Probably. But I know, you know, but I could just imagine like if they're like, hey, we'll give you two grand a month. I'll smoke. I'll smoke them, chain smoke them on this podcast. Oh, just during the podcast. Well, it's none of their business what I do when I'm not here, but I get hooked anyways. <laughs> and then I'd be doing it off the podcast. For right? two grand a month? You wouldn't do it for two grand a month. If they give me two grand a month, even if they give us two grand a month, I'll smoke. I'll chain smoke Marlboro's on this podcast for $2,000 a month. That's only, f it's not that 24 a year, it's eight hours. <laughs> Dude, you know how loopy Six we would be hours. if we chain smoke marbles, especially like if you when we smoked haven't smoked in, in so long. Years. Our first head rush, we'd be like out of it. We'd get sick. You know what we could do? We would get fully sick. You know what we could do though? What? Is we could see, cause you know, we have our merch channel or the merch stuff that we have. Yeah, we, we have, have a like, merch here, show channel. Them your, show them your, uh, your glass that you're drinking right, over there, ahead. buddy. So we have those. We could get a glass, two glass ashtrays. Oh yeah, and we could and best, sit there and ash in best seller, Beckman all day. We could just make this an ash. <laughs> we smoke all day, is what we would call it. Yeah, unleashed to the point of smoking, just burning marbles. So I'm I'm not saying we're serious, but like Philip, we'll Morris, do anything for hey, a sponsor, is what you're saying. You guys, you guys want us to smoke on here? Yeah, you're hurting. We're Zin like, is taking your market share. It's the 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 the, the, the taxes are taking a lot of your money. People are quitting. They're going to vape. You're hurting. You need the upcoming. Oh, you want a promo? Yeah, you cut, need the... <laughs> cut a promo. Philip Morris, you need you need some help. It's going downhill. You need Joel and Eric of Beckman Unleash to burn marble reds grits for two hours. It will help. We'll make it look cool. We are only gonna need four grand a month. It is cool. And it's that's cool. It. That's it. That's my promo. I like that one. So any of you sponsors out there um dupont right dupont would be another way <laughs> we'd work with anyone who has a history of um Shadiness. oil spills things like that we'll, we'll exxon yeah exxon we'll Bro, probably work out with them can i tell you something about that i Pol go large polluters we'll work with you yeah the vaccine what were you gonna tell me oh no man um i went to the Did you say dog vaccine no 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 i wouldn't say that um i went to the exxon valdez with my school my animal school really no, not the Valdez. The, I went the ex after the Exxon Valdez. Every a lot of things changed. They set up all these places, uh, probably all over the country, but left, definitely along the West Coast. There were bird oil places. They like built them. They staffed them. It was like millions of dollars. We went there in 03, and there was no one there. There was like one person giving us a tour. But they opened up the things, and it was just Dawn soap everywhere. And I go, how is this not a Dawn soap commercial? Guess what I saw last year? Dawn soap commercial, them at the oil sanctuary, oh, no, it's or right bird about. oil places opening saying bird oil. I was like, this is a Dawn commercial. That's my story. You know what's it's interesting about that? Movie. So I'm not saying I do this, but uh, for people that are hunters, they have, um, what do you call it? Uh, something called Euro mounting, which is where you take a urine, a head. No, no, oh. Euro mount, not oh. urine. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. You got to get your head out of the gutter, man. Go ahead. So it's called a euro, is in European mount. Yeah. And basically they skin it and then they, you might've seen it, like they have the Texas Longhorns. It's like a skull, a white skull, and then it has antlers coming out of it. Yes. Right? So one of the ways they boil it to get the skin, not the skin, but to get the matter off of it. Right? Yeah, yeah. But then after that, you know what they add to it? Formaldehyde. Dish soap. Not formaldehyde. That's the last podcast. Oh, to clean it. Well, it degreases it. Yeah, so that's your story was worse than my story, and but, my story was pretty bad. But, but both are bad. Yeah. But the but the the dish soap thing actually works though. Yeah. So for it, sure because there's so much grease inside of it oh, yeah. that if that's you don't all, put the that's uh, all you are the soap in there, grease inside of you. That could be true. 
fat. Are you calling me fat? Not you, but but in general. Yeah. So like, but so the point is, is that um it is a great one. But I did bring up the Exxon Valdez yeah. oil Why? spill. Um, I don't know if it caused a lot of harm to animals or not. I don't think it did. Why do you think that? But I mean, let me just double check here. So, it caused a lot of harm to um, see, seemingly seabirds. The second one. Oh, because they, they, they cannot get it oh, off. Oh, man. Look at that. What a, what a shambolic. The, it's the second largest U.S. water. Uh, water uh, Is the first the one the one in 08? Says, which after just, the 2010 Deepwater yeah. Horizon, when Deepwater Horizon's like, hold my beer, bro. Dude. We're going to have this. Oil spill spewing out oil two on months. TV. <laughs> Just bro, can two you months imagine? of oil. You know how people always go like, well, yeah, you know, I don't know why they pay those CEOs that much. I'll tell you what, when you're a CEO and, you're, and that happens and that video is going on and you're like, bro, I, I, I'm, I'm never going to work again. Yeah, you are in deep trouble. I wonder what happened with the, um, what do you think of that Deepwater Horizon? Yeah, what happened? They I don't remember what happened. They're, I just remember it did not stop. And we're watching, and I remember Obama's up there like trying to talk to the country and like whatnot. And then like they just never fixed it. That's when you go, here's what you do. You say, Elon Musk. You go, he can fix all the come problems. in. He can. That's what the thing. You say, come in and you go, you, we're gonna give you as many people as you want. We're gonna do whatever you want. G go fix this. Go fix it. Is all have one guy at top just, like hey fix this yeah like one guy at top not this general you know we need to go through this board and we need to do this and we're gonna let the people who did it we're gonna let them fix it or we're gonna have government employees do it no 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 put the smartest guy at the top and and who understands hey, james cameron i don't call know. james cameron call well yeah you know call I mean, a really smart guy who understands engineering yeah, and call... can break down complex problems which is 1.01 percent of the population yeah call ben affleck right he was on that armageddon thing he knows all about how to yeah call solve ben Affleck complex problems uh, uh bruce willis yeah call so bruce willis how about this so th i think this is interesting captain joseph hazelwood retired to his cabin uh it doesn't matter the time uh they were for deep by water single, horizon no this is still uh exxon valdez okay by a single tug for the passage through valdez narrow Val. Valdez it's not like Valdez. It's Valdez. not Valdez, but whatever. That was the 80s. Or was it was the 80s? It was 80s, right? I don't know. Um, a journey, blah, blah, seven, seven miles. miles. Cousins helped the pilot disembark from the vessel, leaving the captain, uh, blah, 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 blah. Where, where did they get to the action? Okay, here we go. Deviate from the predetermined traffic lane to avoid small icebergs. Common occurrence in the Columbian Glacier calved to such. Where do they get to the Lookout action? reported that the Bly Reef light appeared off the starboard bow at 45 degrees. This was problematic given that the light should have been off the port side. So uh, <laughs> they're like on the wrong side of That's something. That's a problem. That's a problem. Hey, do you know what I just learned? I met a lady, her husband. Did you know this? These tankers in Florida, I don't know where in Florida, her husband goes out on a little boat, boards the tanker, all the tankers that come in and then navigates the, the ship, these giant ships, well, I don't know if they're where they're coming when it's going into Florida. I know where they're coming from when it's going into Long Beach. And then he drives them in through the harbor because it's his harbor, essentially. He's, yeah. He knows it. They don't know it. They Someone else drives the ships in. Hmm. Yeah, that's Did sounds... you know that? You no, probably thought the drivers it. take them all the way in. They don't. You would think that. But so it sounds like it sounds like there's some tr trouble going on here. So, so multiple factors have been there identified was... as contributing to the incident. And so the incident was, didn't they hit, they hit a... Did they hit a glacier? I should know this. No, there's no glaciers. It was they like by something. Oregon. It's like where I live, I think. No, it was in, it was in Alaska, dude. No, oh, then it would. Okay, so Exxon Shipping Company failed to supervise the master and provide a rested sufficient crew for Exxon Valdez. The N NTSB found this practice was widespread throughout the industry, prompting a safety. The third mate well, failed what to maneuver the vessel. So they hit something. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to Google this. Ugh. Them off the grounding shipping under captain or radioed the coast guard informing them of the grounding so they grounded they hit the ground okay so i don't want it to be too a... critical because when i was a young kid i went fishing with my dad and his boss and his son and it was so dark that we were driving and then we're you know in the ocean whatever and yeah. we're taken off in and we're near point loma and as we're driving we're like wow it's really dark and we keep driving and all of a sudden we hear like <sighs> on the ground and we were about to crash into point loma yeah because it's so dark that you don't right. you think you know where so it, right we ran you, into the same you, you understand it yeah yeah the <laughs> issue that that happens so apparently 
It says Captain Hazelwood, who was widely reported to have been drinking heavily that night, was not at the controls when the ship struck the reef. Okay, so he struck the reef. Okay, excellent. I don't Blade believe Hazelwood. most of this, just so you know. What do you mean, dude? You think they purposefully spilled the oil? No, I believe that when things like this happen, they are like, there's scapegoats. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're, there's, I see what you're saying. There's drink. Uh, hey, someone said, hey, let's make up this drinking thing because you think we're going to be friggin' yeah. the, we're not going to be at fault for this um, unbelievably horrible thing that's all over the world news. Wait. So let's say the guy was tipping him back. What's he going to say? Well, here's the thing, right? It says your very next thing says the exact same thing, right? Exxon oh. blamed Hazelwood for the grounding of the tanker, but he accused the corporation of making him escape. Ah, I did not read that. But do you know, it's not called the Hazelwood Valdez. It's called the Exxon Valdez. So a yeah. nice try. But at the end of the day, no one gives a crap about the captain, right? They might for a week or two, but in history, we'll be like, who's the so. company that did it? Well, there you go. Right. I mean, so wow, that is interesting. But yeah, here here's the map. And I believe it's in, yeah, it's in Alaska. Alaska. And I think they had a name for it. It was like, uh, it was in Prince William Sound, Alaska. Oh, yeah. I've heard of that. But yeah, they, so anyways, I think there was just an, un, I'm joking. There was an incredible number of marine wildlife. That oh, was you were killed. joking. Yeah. I, thought you were serious. I mean, that's like the only thing I do remember from yeah. it, right? Was that. So um, anyways, that's, so anyone who wants to come on and talk about oil spills, bring it on um should we get oh that was a good comment we have any other comments no i've got more comments let me i got some uh, let me bring one up for you um this is funny this is from last week uh the the bem 08 says i think we've gotten over our skis on this podcast that was when we started talking about flat earth and everything else mm -hmm. and then you were saying and they just quoted this as well we're just two guys asking questions with no answers which i think is absolute comedy yeah one? yeah we're, we're trying to talk about having a few more answers on the next podcasts this podcast did but not, apparently uh, to talk zach george any good for that you don't cause. need to answer you just have to ask the questions ask the questions well oh, yeah i had answers you did have answers that was good okay sis, give us give us something good bro i don't um oh i don't want to just recap last time but people liked when i said I've killed so many gophers. I leave the gophers in the hole as a sign to the rest of the gophers. That was cool. Um, Arrow, Arley, Arley liked that. All right. I think um, we should be done. Okay. How are we doing on time? We have eight more minutes, dude. You know what off grid dogs also said? What I don't want to misquote say? him. He said that the pet food companies um, fund vet schools. Oh, I know. I saw that. There was a few things that came up that I was on in the comments. Yeah. And I read them at the time, but I was like, we got to figure that out. That's kind of a big deal. Yeah, that is huge. You know, um, he has another one. Oh, maybe Joel, maybe fun scholarships. Maybe not. This is off grid again. I don't know. Joel, I know you like percentages. So here's a question for the next podcast. I mean, we don't like to answer a lot of questions here, but give throw them a bone here. Yeah. What percentage of your dog training is changing the dog and what percent is changing the human slash client? It's so, it's so varies. Like a dog, I had a dog today who had never smelled a dog and was aggressive towards dogs. And you'll see the video. It's, it'll be the next video you see before this one. He smelled three dogs today. Okay. Yeah. Never met a dog, gone at him. He smelled their butts. It was the greatest thing ever. The owner does not need the leash for that. The dog simply needs to smell or meet other dogs. Mm -hmm. That is the defining moment and big deal of that hour session. Mm -hmm. That's what matters. Yeah. Now, then I sit down with the owner and go, hey, you got to act like this. You got to do this. I'm not saying you've got to get your dog with other dogs because it's dangerous because I have to have the leash so that no one's hurt and whatnot. So that's a situation where I can sit down with the owner and talk to the owner and she can do some things, but I'm doing almost all of it because the big deal was me was him meeting dogs. Then there's times where the owners come in and they're 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 doing everything wrong. And I just, I, it's, it's oh, all fault, about, right? It's all confused. about the owner. And it might be their fault and they might be confused. They're generally confused. It's not, yeah, it's not that there is like fault is a bad word. Right? It is like, a bad word. Because it's like somebody. They all want the best for their dog. They yeah. think they're doing the best, even if they're doing it wrong. Yeah, they're they're mis, misguided. 
Did you see the um did I answer that question? Yeah, did you see the one that was about the dog food? It was from Canada. They're all about dog foods. One of them was so good. It was talking about, and I was trying to find it. Um, but he was talking about the stuff that they are allowed to put in. Remember, you're talking about the chicken oh. byproduct. Well, he was talking about what they're doing in Canada, and they're putting they're finding like floor sweepings and like chemicals. Oh Did you not see that? No. Oh man, you say something really Bro, cool and I'll find okay, it. Okay, I'll say something along. This is what I learned in school in my vet classes, veterinary classes. It was by a vet. He said, um, and I, I I I'm pretty sure this is true. Chickens, they feed them their own poop. So chickens eat a lot of protein. Protein is expensive, right? They go out and they eat bugs and whatnot. They don't eat strawberries and stuff. Yeah. Well, strawberries are expensive too. So in order to give the chickens protein, they feed them their own poop. And that's then they horrible. lay eggs. Then you buy the eggs or you buy the chicken. But that's, that's what horrible. they do. Yeah. That's horrible. That's yeah. I, I can't find it. Unfortunately. Feed. Employees are generally for a, a place, right? Whether it's a chicken place or a zoo, employees are always almost the number one cost. Yeah. For, for an animal place. And that's the same for the animal industry. For animal places, zoos, aquariums whatnot the yeah. second biggest is um feeding the animals yeah i mean that's a so huge piece of if it, right? when you can when you can get the feed low you're going to make more money the fact i mean there's some stuff that's right you just have to take a bit more care i think this is it here it is tiffany Harmon. i used to work at maple leaf foods this has to be it has to be it we did mostly processed chicken all of our waste inedible okay that's not good inedible would go to dog food facilities that's alarming to start off what with. are you talking about the floor oh she goes on same way process as a same way slash process as a garbage truck i was horrified when i learned this because so much garbage non-food gets in the inedible waste two when being uh swept or swept off floor like hydraulic fluid metal shavings nails Hardware, cement, lots of plastics, wood, sanitizer, and chemicals. Some ingredients we would dump were actual controlled chemicals yeah. that the government monitors. Trisodium phosphate being most common and used in all product. The other controlled chemical we use for listeria prevention, the wastewater plant would monitor for. It's a big deal and big fines when uh, we'd have to uh, spill slash leak. Right. Not to mention, too, the hot sauces, salts, etc. that aren't dog friendly. I'm in Canada. Maybe things are different over in America, but I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it, I too. Doubt, <laughs> I doubt it, too. And Joel, you're the best. You've helped me in so many ways in training my Connie Corso, Presa Canaria, 1.5-year-old male beast. I appreciate you. That's heavy. That's a crazy comment. Yeah, that's a first-person account of working in these places. <laughs> Look at Doc Grid Dog coming through. He goes, he goes, Dog food is poison here in the USA too. <laughs> yeah, he said what he said. And then look at Dynamark coming in. Wow, that's scary. And to hear direct from someone who was there. Yeah. Yeah, I read that as well as a few of the other ones. And I was like, you could do podcasts for years just on some of the, like, like from that vaccine thing. We, sorry, dog vaccine thing that you just talked about to that. Like if there's, and I'm not saying we don't need to get into the politically um, charged um, stuff. But we do stand for stuff, right? And we're definitely, you know, you certain people would disagree with that we care deeply for dogs, but it is true that we do. And I would think that if some company was putting all that crap into dog food and I heard about it, I would never want to do business with that dog company again. Yeah. I wonder what companies that is. But even if it was a bigger company, like say they owned another company. And then it went up the chain to unnamed company because I don't want to throw a company no. under the bus, especially we don't know what the facts are. Especially because we're hunting for sponsorships. <laughs> <laughs> Nestle, where are you at, buddy? No, like uh, any of these ones. But if I found out that they were legit doing that, I want, I'd want to never buy a product, even if it was a big conglomerate like that. Oh, yeah. Unless sure. it was like Mars, though, because I think Mars makes Butterfinger. and <laughs> I, I have principles, but I, I can't. I mean, I'm not going to naughty the Butterfinger. Yeah. You know what I mean, Butterfingers are good. They used to be better, but yeah, they're they've, really good. They've modified it. They've added. Uh, no yeah, more. I'm gonna get. We're gonna get sued like Oprah when she said that thing about McDonald's. So we should. Be no, quiet. she said about the cattle industry in Texas, and they came after her, and did, it changed her life. But did she win? 
That's a good question. I'll look it up while you read. The yeah, next one. they they made. I think she won, but they made her life a living hell during it. That was a big that's deal. actually she what actually, I think uh, happened. That was a big deal. When the what would you call it? Um, cattle. cattle auction. No cattle auction. Nobody right? is, wasn't it McDonald's or no? No, it was the McDonald's oh, lost it. Oh, but that it had to do something with beef. I think. I think she was after the jury decided in her favor. 1998, Winfrey emerged from the courthouse in Amar Amarillo and declared to a national television audience, free speech not only lives at rocks. I wonder if she would say that now. So what did Oprah Winfrey say about a burger? On April 16, 1996, Oprah featured a show about dangerous food after the British government announced 10 of its citizens died by eating beef from cows sick with disease. What got Oprah in trouble was this statement. It just stopped me cold from eating another burger. Why can she not say that? I'm not saying it's right, but yeah, I mean, of course she can say that. Yeah, to be it's one thing if she's saying this is poison, don't eat it. She's saying, yeah, that's pretty. Crazy. I didn't eat it, or I this uh, yeah. caused me not to eat this. Yeah. It's a it's yeah. a it's a free speech issue. Yeah, and it's a it's a it's a personal choice. If just like if people see mistreatment of animals and they're like, I don't want to eat from that company yeah. anymore. Or I don't want to eat it in general. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, we should end. We it, hit it? But I have one more I, thing. I, well, if we go over ninety minutes, I get my my bonus. So that's well, why we're I, over. That's what I'm saying. I had to get it to ninety minutes. So it's you give coming. Me my it's twelve dollar bonus for the it's year. Coming, bro. Change your life. It's amazing. Um, I said something about men under um five three, and I thought they were little people. And a guy commented, and he said, <laughs> "I'm five three. This makes me sad." And he put a little crying face. Are you going to apologize? I am going to apologize to him. I wanted to apologize in the comments, and then I was like, I I. It made me laugh because he put a little crying face next to it. Yeah. And so I didn't know whether I should laugh or apologize. So I did nothing. So do you want to... Because it made me laugh. But do you want to apologize for anything in 2023? Like podcast Oh, the wise? whole year? Yeah. Oh, wow. An annual Do you want to apologize to me? No. No. There's, there's nothing really to apologize to you for. I like think, really, I mean, the like only there thing I could think be some things, is, but not like a real apology. Well, there's not; they're not real apologies, <laughs> anyways. Oh, to be fair, oh, a fake apology. Can you have a fake apology for me? Um, I apologize for grabbing your face. Thank you. I will not press charges. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, that was probably the weirdest thing. And then, did you see how I stormed out? And you're like, "What are you doing, bro?" <laughs> I just yeah. wanted a soda. Yeah. Um, yeah. The only thing. Um, I want to apologize for the future podcasts that are coming out here. Um, if you think that they can get off topic at, at times, I just want to future apologize. Yeah, I'm probably not going to do a deep dive into potty training for 30 minutes anymore because mm, people don't really they don't care. care. That's yeah. the problem. Is that in if this... they cared, I would. That's what we started this for. We're going to be like, oh, I'm going to talk for 20 minutes about podgy training because it's not shouldn't be its own video just just talking i know because pot well potty training is maybe a bad example but like the pod knows what time it is though that's the thing the people that are watching right now are the hardcores they know exactly what this is about yeah now and now and then some goofball from the normal the normal youtube channel stumbles over because they've been watching your content and they start watching and they're waiting for some like crazy insightful thing and even if you give them the the potty training or the what was Spiel. it what was separation the, um, anxiety the continuum one? oh my my continuum yeah what was it called my punishment reinforcement continuum yeah like we should we give them that i mean guys we want to just be real with you cut a promo real quick we do these ones we're like hey how do we give them the most important information that yes. they need to train their dogs and i'm like this can solve all your problems and you you do it no you spend cares. four or five hours on it right yeah it does absolutely nothing we talk People about like a bum I don't want to that fix you get my in a dog. fight with and it does twice the numbers. Yes. It's like, come on. We're going to give you what you want. Yeah, we'll give you what you want. And you know what? I can promise you in 2024, we're going to give you what you want and we're also going to give you what you don't want. <laughs> so that is true. We're going to give you what we want to give you. Do you have any New Year's resolutions for 2024? I do. What is it? Um, I need to be more Wes. You told me this yesterday. I need to be more Wes Watson-ish and get these videos out on time and in a timely manner and i live and die by the videos going out and i so what are you committing didn't to start off to that greatest. sounds like an apology not an actual it is an resolution. apology what am i committing to yeah well i've been good so 
this Are this you grading your own papers? this last few months I've really analyzed like could I do more videos? Like I make mo more money when I do more videos. Like it's it's obvious, but they have to be good videos. And I literally it's like I do the podcast, I do the video, I do my sessions, I manage my employees, I try to spend time with my family, I try to coach my son's football team, I try to help my daughter in her in her sport and I and I try to have some fun in there. And then I go, how the hell am I going to do another video? Now you might say, wake up earlier. You know, there's probably ways, but it's like, boy. But how much tough. of it, is there anything that Life's you're, like, I mean, maybe you could just not hang out with your family as much. That would be my first. <laughs> it's possible. It's certainly an option. What time do you wake up every morning? Seven. Seven? Seven thirty? Sometimes seven thirty. Seven forty five? Not generally 7.45. Okay, so you're up before 8 o'clock. Yeah. What time do you go to bed? <laughs> I go to bed pretty late. So I can, So you're tired, right? You, 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 go, you like go to bed at midnight and then yeah. you wake up at... Yeah, sometimes before, sometimes after. You might be watching some Game of Thrones or something like that, right? I should. Sopranos. So I didn't get what the actual resolution was, though. <laughs> to try to be better about the video output. Okay, off-grid in Dynamart and the other hardcores. Does that sound like a good resolution to you? I'm going to try to get better. At... Come on. These need it's to be hard. smart. They need to be smart goals, right? God. Specific, measurable, You're right. attainable, You're realistic, right. time bound. I don't remember exactly. Right. What You're good at this stuff and you've yeah. tried to coach me and you've realized that it's, you know, you're like giving me suggestions if I don't take them, but like, what are you going to do? You're going to like, you know, you can't, you can't like make me, you know, clearly gotta... I can put pressure on you during the podcast though. Yeah. Yeah, here's what I would say. Do. Here's how, what I would say to make that. So, yeah, time bound would be um, this year, 2024. So that's mm. the T of smart. Um, so specific, I would say one podcast so the S. and one uh, long Video. form on yeah, Sunday. But it's it's always on Sunday. But it's 52 weeks a year, so you do 52. Right, right, right. right. It means you can't miss. Which I which I missed once this year. Come on, guys. Can I get someone to fact check that? You've only missed one. I think it was two weeks ago. I don't know about that. Did you? Didn't you just miss one again? Yeah, that was. I feel like that was the only one I missed on the long form videos, not the podcast. Um, <laughs> I don't. I mean, maybe I'll talk offline with you. Um, I don't but, know. But what That's I'm funny. thinking is, um, what I'd like to do is get a bit more, like, come up with interesting topics for the podcast, and then we'll just dig in hardcore and sounds then we'll great. then we'll get into the flatter stuff after that yeah sounds great sounds good all right love okay. you guys see you guys Bye. talk to you